Okay, welcome back to KSP. Uh, today I'll be doing another tutorial. Uh, this one is going to be a tutorial on how to get to Minimus. That's Kerbin's, Kerbin, yeah, Kerbin's other moon. And it's slightly further away than the moon than the moon, and it's a bit harder to get to because it's not got a perfectly equatorial orbit, and it's got lot, it's got a lot less gravity uh, than the moon, which means it's a bit harder to get an encounter with it. But it also makes landing a lot easier. Uh, in this video, in this video, this is going to be the first part of a two-part video where I'm going to be building a ship, flying it, and landing it on Minimus. And then in the next part, hopefully, I'm going to be flying it back to Kerbin. So at the moment, I'm just building the lander. I'm just. This is going to be a quite a big lander because it's going to. It doesn't need that much fuel, as I realise, but oh well. Um, so it's it's uh, now I'm adding the the orbital stage, which is going to uh, get us into an orbit of Minimus, and uh, this is going to consist of the nuclear motors again, like in my first video, because they are just so they're really efficient, and it just it just helps a lot with the with that orbital stage, making sure you've got enough fuel when you don't have to take very much weight. Okay, so now we're on to the main launch stage, where I'm going to be using those big orange fuel tanks. They're pretty good, and I'm adding some smaller fuel tanks underneath them, because I think if you've got a big rocket underneath directly attached onto the orange fuel tank, it doesn't work as well. So I just added a little bit extra fuel to that orbital stage, which you really don't need. In fact, if I hadn't added that, it would have been absolutely perfect. Now I thought about adding more fuel to this launch stage just there, <coughs> but then I then I just decided to add some solid fuel boosters because you know why not? It just helps you take off in the first place. So yeah, this is our rocket so far. Just adding some struts. I actually ended up forgetting to put these struts connecting the uh, main fuel tank to those outer fuel tanks, which was a very big mistake. And yeah. So that looks like our rocket. If we just add some, some of these support struts and sort of the staging, we'll be ready for our first launch. So just making sure the staging is in the right place. Hopefully it is. And launch. Okay, so throttling up. Uh, what I was just doing there is locking the gimballing on those outer engines just helps a bit with stability. And then I realised something was wrong with the fuel uh, distribution and I had forgot to put the fuel lines in, which was a mistake. But oh well. Yeah, basically what the gimballing is, it's where it lets um, it lets the engine change where it's pointing its thrust to keep it straight but when you're using the autopilot uh... yeah that just happened yeah but when you're using the autopilot it can make it it can just make it wobble a bit that happened because the only way thing that was holding the outer fuel tanks to the inner fuel tank was struts that were on the solid fuel booster so when that decoupled there was nothing holding them on which was a shame, but hopefully this time it's going to be successful. I hope. So yeah, we're just doing our gravity turn at about 10 kilometers, or just after 10 kilometers actually, and then we'll be getting our apoapsis up to, I think about uh, 60 kilometers. Yeah, 60 kilometers, because. Um, that will mean we'll be out of the atmosphere, but we'll still be very low down, which means we'll be moving quickly. So we won't have to use as much fuel to expand our orbit to minimus. Yeah, so that's about the right height. So I'm now burning along the horizon to get our orbit fairly circular, hopefully. And then that happened. Those atomic motors were clipping with the main fuel tank, which was very annoying, but through the magic of jump cuts, it was all okay. Now I've made a slight change to this, basically what I've done is I've added some small hard points 
in between the fuel tanks that the atomic rocket motors are on and the main that central fuel tank that they're getting fuel fed from which uh which helped a lot because it just meant that they were further away from that orange fuel tank so we can see minimus up there just past the moon behind the moon and we've got a periapsis so we're just walking to our apoapsis just to get that a little bit higher try and circularize our orbit a little bit and now we're tr just trying to get a minimus encounter which is quite hard but we managed to get one straight off which is pretty good just trying to get that perfect now and that's looking pretty good we just want to we want to wh what we want to do we want to get the encounter by using as little fuel as as little prograde fuel as possible just good okay so i've just cut to where i've done the maneuver there because you know that was just really warping around at four times speed so yeah and now we are warping up to minimus and there's the encounter just about there so we've now we're now going around minimus's gravity and we're going to burn retrograde to try and get ourselves into an orbit of minimus which should happen in a minute yeah really i should be burning at the periapsis but yeah it doesn't really matter i will walk to it in a minute All right, there is our minimus orbit. It's a bit wonky, but oh well. So I'm just warping around a bit there. You can see minimus. It's very kind of mountainous. Now, one thing that you've really got you've really got to add to a minimus lander is the landing lights. You really want landing lights because if you end up having to land on the dark side of minimus, it's very very hard because minimus is very mountainous and it means you can never really tell accurately from your altitude meter how far you are above the ground as you can see there as we're just flying over it <laughs> sorry my dog's barking hang on right so just making our orbit a bit smaller and burning retrograde there with our th still using our atomic motors as i said if we hadn't added those extra fuel it would have been absolutely perfect so we're now going pretty much straight down, which is very good. Also, uh, one thing you can do to make this a bit more efficient, I ended up actually not using those those outer um, engines on the lander, so you can just use that middle one. So now I'm transferring all the RCS fuel from the transfer stage into those little ones on the lander. And we're coming into land. We've got our landing lights on. This was just going down very slowly, so I, that's why I skipped most of it out. Just coming down. And just about now, we should touch down. There are the landing lights, and there we go. Okay, so that's the end of our first video. In the next episode, I will be flying this back to Kerbin. So, see you then. Bye.